Welcome to episode 61 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today I will show you the USO model and workflow. It is a unified style and subject-driven generation. Basically, you give it one or two images and it can generate a new image in that style. For some styles it works better than others, but you will see over the next minutes how I use it. Make sure your Comfy UI is updated. Go to the Update folder, run the Update Comfy UI file, wait until it finishes, then restart Comfy UI. After that, you can get the workflows for free from Discord. You can open them by going to File, choosing Open, and selecting the workflow, or you can simply drag the JSON file into the Comfy UI canvas. If you still have missing nodes, which usually come with the Comfy UI update, you can also go to Manager and use the Update All button. Let's start with what models and nodes you need to run this workflow. As usual, you have all the links on the left in this Pixaroma note. You need to download a few models, but some you might already have, like the Flux model. Just click where it says here and download each model in its respective folder. That means where you have Comfy UI installed, you have a models folder, and inside you have folders where you need to put each model. Then you load the models in each of the nodes. For this one, because I use the FP8, it contains the clip and text encoder, which is why it uses the load checkpoint node. But you can also try with guff models, though in that case you need to add the clip and load VAE node too, just like we usually have in Flux workflows. Since it is using an existing Flux model, it doesn't really know about the new USO LoRa that is used for style transfer. That's why we use the model patch, which patches the Flux model so it understands what the LoRa is about, at least that is my understanding of it. It's all new to me too. Basically, that LoRa is what improves the style transfer, but it needs that model patch. It also uses clip vision to understand how the style in our image looks. For the nodes, I tried to keep it minimal, only the RG3 and the Control-Alt nodes, which you can install from Manager and Custom Nodes Manager. If you want to learn more about USO, you can click here to check the GitHub page, see examples, and how they prompt. Or you can click here to check the Comfy blog, where they also talk about this model. Now that we have all the models and nodes, Comfy UI is updated, and the models are loaded in the nodes, we can test the workflow. You can see it first looks at our style image, and that information is encoded. That info goes to the new USO style reference node together with the model patch and the flux model. This easy cache is new. You can bypass it if you want with right click and choose bypass. It helps with speed and the quality reduction is barely visible, so I leave it on most of the time. I use 20 steps with CFG1 so it ignores the negative prompt, Euler for sampler, and simple for scheduler. From here, you choose the aspect ratio. As you can see, I used this image for style, and I got a castle in a similar style. For the prompt, I just wrote what I wanted to see. You can mention the art style to help, but it also works if you only mention the subject. For example, I can put a knight for the prompt, and when I run it, I get something like this. If you want to do more experiments, you can also try using a fixed seed to see how things are affected. Then you can add things in the prompt and you should see the subtle changes for that prompt and seed. But if a seed does not work, trying a new one might work. I noticed it is quite unpredictable. For some seeds it works great, for others not so much, so make sure you try different seeds. Let's try to generate a modern building. The result is nice and similar in style. Let's add more elements in the prompt to see if mentioning more elements from the style image gives us more of that style. Now the colors look more like in the style image. Let's try a white bunny to see if it keeps the style. It seems to be similar. Now let's try a different style image, since that's the fun part when we do experiments. Same prompt, only the style is different. This seed didn't render the bunny right, but on the second one it is better. It is fun to experiment, but it doesn't work as it should with all style images, and sometimes the quality is not so great. At least for some images, like paintings and flat art styles, it gives nice results. It does seem to make more mistakes compared to the flux model alone, so if you get something ugly, change the seed, and if it still looks ugly, change the style image or the prompt. Let's try something more 3D, like this image. It still tends to make it look more like a painting style than 3D. With 3D, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Add 3D-related words in the prompt to help. Let's see how it does with this drawing style. 
the result is okay. If you want it more complex like in the actual sketch, you will need to add more info in the prompt. Let's see this painting style. This came out quite nice, it works well with painting styles. Let's check with anime style. It seems to work well with anime too. Let's try a different animal maybe. It has two tails. Let's try a different seed. Yes, that looks better. You can also try to reduce the strength a little. Maybe use 0.9, which might help in some cases. So anime seems to work okay. Let me show you how you can add another image for the style so you can mix them. Let's copy this clip vision encode node by holding the alt key. I will do the same for the load image node. Connect the image inputs. Connect the clip vision model too. Now we need to connect this output somewhere. I will make some room here and I am duplicating this style reference node. Now the model will go through that node as well so we chain link those style reference nodes. Now we just connect to the model patch like we have on the previous node and connect the vision output too. Let's test with a different image to see if we get a mix of styles. I did not see much difference if I changed the order, so if one style is stronger than the other, it has something to do with the image itself, or with vision and how it reads the image. The first one did not have too much purple, maybe because the LoRa strength is lower, but let's try a different seed. Now I got more of that purple from the second image, so it picked more of the color but not so much of the 3D from the second one. It seems to favor the painting style more than 3D. Anyway, I saved a workflow with those two style images, but if you want to learn comfy UI, try to reconstruct them to learn how they connect and play with settings. For example, for this combination of styles, I got this image that looks interesting. From here you can change the ratio, so I can create a portrait ratio if I want. And the result is this one, still less 3D and more flat and digital painting style. So let's add a colorful flat style to see how that influences it. Now, it seems to be more influenced by the second image than the first, so it is kind of a lottery. You never know exactly which style has more influence when you mix them, but it is fun to play with. And let me show you another workflow that uses both a subject and a style. For this one, we upload the first image for the subject, which can be a person, a character, or an object, and then the second image is the style you want. For the subject image, it uses this scale down to dimension node, and it has this largest size value that is recommended to set between 512 and 1024 pixels. It keeps the composition more consistent at 512 pixels, but sometimes you get better results with 1024 pixels, so try both. Then this image goes to the reference latent node, which uses some method to get the reference of the subject. I don't completely understand how it works, but what you should know is that the subject image together with the prompt goes to the K sampler and is somehow mixed with the vision it got from the style image. Here is the prompt I used for this example, and when I run it, it should keep the man and change the style depending on the prompt. I got this result, which is kind of similar, but if you want more consistency, you can try Quen Edit or Flux Context, since this model is more for style transfer, so depending on the prompt, sometimes it is similar and sometimes not so much. I left only Portrait of Man in the prompt and I still got a somewhat similar subject and style. Let's try with this pencil drawing. If I zoom in, you can see that for some images, the quality is not perfect, like it adds imperfections. I am not sure why it causes that, and I haven't found a good fix. I tried bigger models, disabled cache, but it still happens for some images. Like this pencil drawing, if I zoom in, the quality is not always good. Let's try with a more complex sketch. You can see in the result, it picked the mood of the sketch, but not the complexity. So here's what I like to do. I take a screenshot of the subject and the style, then I go to ChatGPT and paste that screenshot, asking it to give me a long, detailed prompt for the man in the art style of the second image. ChatGPT is quite good at that. You can also use the ChatGPT API node and do all of that directly in Comfy UI, but it's not free since it costs credits for each generation. Because I already pay for ChatGPT, there's no point in spending extra. I got this result, which is much more complex, but it had some imperfections. I tried another seed, and now it's better, a complex style illustration that would be hard to get from a prompt alone without the style. Let's see if I change the style to this dolly-like image. I'll take another screenshot and ask ChatGPT for a prompt. Now I got this result, 
It probably saw in that style image some melting eyes, but I didn't want that for my character. So I explained to ChatGPT what the problem was, told it I wanted the eyes fixed, and gave it the screenshot. It gave me a new prompt. Running it again seems to have fixed the eyes. So you can do a lot of interesting things if you also use ChatGPT. The subject can be anything, even a simple texture. For example, let's try with this one. I should describe the subject there, but let's see what happens if I put a dog in the prompt. There is no dog there, but it saw parts of the forms and interpreted them. Let's describe the subject more accurately, like an abstract 3D sculpture. Now I got a little bit more from both worlds. Remember what I told you about the largest size setting? If we put 512, it should follow the composition of the subject more closely. You can also try without a prompt if you want. Now I got more of the original composition combined with the second one, so it's good for crazy strange stuff. Let's add something fluffy to the mix. And I got this interesting sculpture. It also picked up some colors and texture from the purple monster. So go crazy and experiment with different styles and subjects. If you want to run the workflow in the cloud, you can try Running Hub. I will add the link to the workflows. So this one is for one style, this one uses two styles, and this one uses one subject and one style. To run it, just click the Launch in the Cloud button and wait for it to load. Then you have the workflow here where you can upload an image, add the prompt, and click Run. If you have a Plus subscription, you can run this one that is faster, but it uses more credits and has 48 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 24. So let's run it normally. You can see here it started to generate. Normally the first generation is slower and the second one is faster, but in general it is a little slower than on my RTX 4090. Even though they have the same card, it has something to do with how cache is managed in the cloud, so I get faster speed locally than in the cloud. But if you have a low-end video card, using the cloud is a good option. It consumed 9 coins and got the first generation in 44 seconds. I saw it sometimes takes between 30 seconds and 1 minute. Let's run it again. This time, it got stuck more on loading the model, not sure why, but after it passed that loading part, it went pretty fast. I am not sure what happened there. Usually the second generation is way faster, but my Chrome window influenced it somehow when I recorded. I do have some strange glitches sometimes in Chrome on different sites. And the result is quite good. That is all for today. Thank you legends and everyone who subscribed to the membership and supports this channel. Don't forget to get the free workflows from Discord, and we will soon have a new monthly challenge with prizes. Leave a like and a comment to help with the YouTube algorithm. Have a great day.